Hello, Relativity friends. Uh, I was reading a paper online about Riemannian geometry. Uh, it's very hard for me to read. It's all in math speak, which I don't really care for, but they are mathematicians. Anyway, that's not the point. Uh, there was a statement in there that said, and it is obvious that the covariant derivative of the metric tensor is zero. And I said, really, is it really? Is it, why is it obvious? So I tried to look it up, and uh, I kept getting basically the same answer that deals with the fundamental theorem of Ramanian geometry, which states that on any Ramanian manifold, there's a unique affine connection that is torsion free and metric compatible called the Levy Civiti connection. Now, this is the uh, Christoffel the symbols, the Levi Savita Christoffel the symbols that we use in relativity on any given the metric. And uh, I do understand this part here, the metric compatibility. I'm not real sure what this is yet. Uh, I'm just starting to dig into it. But I think it is telling me that uh, the dot product of two tensors that are parallel transported around a curved space that third dot product should remain constant and since the metric tensor is a dot product of uh the basis of the vectors i guess that is is what they mean by that anyway i'm going to keep digging into this math speak here uh and if it's interesting uh, i'll let you know <laughs> i suspect it's not going to be but anyway, what I want to do is prove that the covariant derivative of the metric tensor is equal to zero. Okay, they told me it is. They told me it's obvious. Well, I, I, I have to show that for myself. I want to know that it's zero. All right, so we're going to make up an equation here. Now, my covariant derivatives are just capital D's with a subscript. So this is uh, the covariant derivative of the the metric g b c with respect to the coordinate a and obviously the first term you always get is the directional derivative like you would in any the vector calculus and then you get these two connection terms now remember we need two of these because this is a two indexed uh, tensor b and c and b and c are both in the covariant position so we get two the negative terms Remember the last video, we had one in the contravariant, one in the covariant. So we got a plus and a minus. Well, here we get two minuses. And because they're both covariant, that means that the summation index has to go in this direction. If you had a covariant and a contravariant, the contravariant summation would go in this direction. Uh, all of these things are very good exercises for practicing your syntax, which is Really quite complicated in tensor of the calculus. All right, so we have this part. We know that we need a gamma. Uh, we need two gammas. And we need a sum, some summation index going in the same direction. So in the first case, we, we pick two free indexes. We got three, the free indexes, A, B, C. So we pick A and B. And then we got our summation index. We've got one left over the, the free index. We pick C. All right. So in the next one, we do the other two, two indexes. We, we just pick A and, A and C. So we got A and C. We've got one left over, which is B. All right. So that's how this trick works. Every time it works is the same way. Once you get used to it. All right. Now let's write down what our Christoffel the symbols are. And these are the Levi Savita Christoffel the, the symbols. All right, so because these are in this format, I'm going to pick them the same way. But this time now, these become free indices, A, B, M. All right, so the trick is you write down your inverse metric, the tensor, with this covariant component first, M. Then you write, you, you, you make up a summation index, and I made up N. So it always goes with the partial of G first index, summation index, and the second derivative, 
the the derivative with the second index, right? So I got G A N X B. This this format always goes this way. The partial of G with the summation index the N, then the second free index B with respect to the first index A. Then the third term always goes the partial of B A the two free indexes, it, it could be BA or AB because the tensor is symmetric. We'll get to that in a minute. Then the derivative with respect to the summation, right? So this is the, the format that you always use. You can change any of these letters around any way you want. As long as you follow that, that format, it always works. It took me a while to, to figure this one out. All right. So let's go back to our guy here uh, is the, the second one, M-A-C, M-A-C. I did exactly the same thing, exactly the same, the, the, the format. So now I've got these isolated, okay? So now we want to multiply times these metric tensors. So I'm saying 1A is this guy times this guy, right? So I get this expression. And now you know what this is, right? When you have the metric tensor times the inverse metric, the tensor, you get the Kronecker delta. So these M's get contracted out and you get NC. Now we're going to take NC, <laughs> the delta NC, and put him right back in here, thusly. Right now, let's see what happens. Okay, because... I have an N upstairs and N downstairs here. This is this is multiplied by this, yes. Then the N takes out the N, we're left with AC. So we got AC. This N takes out this N, we're left with the C B. This N takes out this N and we're left with C. All right, so this is what we want. Now let's go to the the next one. We're going to do exactly the same thing. So this is this part of the equation. I'm calling it 2A. <laughs> I don't know why. All right. So this time it gives us the delta function in B. All right. So we put that in, in B, everywhere. This N takes out that. That N takes out that. That N takes out that. And it leaves us with this. So now we've got everything we need to put back into our original equation, which is this. So we put in this part and this part. And remember, the metric tensor is symmetric about the diagonal. So GBC is equal to GCB, right? The diagonals are all GAA, GBB, GCC, but the off diagonals are all equal. I want to say always, but I should never say never. I don't know. All of the ones I've worked with are all equal. All right, so here's our whole shebang. Now, what we want to do is start gathering up like terms. All right, so let's look at the A's first. So we here is a XA, here's a XA, and here's an XA. All right, so we got minus one half, minus one half. That gives us a negative one of GCB XA. And remember what we just talked about. BC is the same as, as the CB. So this is zero. Now let's gather up the Bs. So we got XB here and XB here. And this is a negative of a negative, right? So that's a, a positive. So these two are going out. AC is the same as CA, zero. We got one left. What is it? Oh, here it is. XC, we got two XCs. So we got a negative, a negative of a negative is a positive, and this is a negative. So we got that, and it's zero. So all of them are zero. So the covariant derivative of the metric tensor is equal to zero. All right, so what am I going to do with that information? I don't know. I think I'm going to keep, we're, we're working on it. I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.